Well, Christy, I'm excited for this call. I was just telling you before we hit record, like selfishly, I am like in learning public speaking, like actually learning it. Like I've done it, but I'm like, I need to learn from someone who's done it. So I've been like crushing your courses. I've gone through two of your courses. Um, and we, I know you've just joined a mastermind that I'm a part of and that's how we got connected. And so I'm excited to get to know you more and, and I'm excited for your business, but I'm excited to t- today to talk about what you're a master at and then how it can relate to us as content creators, because it's not just we were talking, riffing about this a little bit. It's not just speaking on a stage. Right. It really is how to craft a message, which is what you're really good at. So just, Christy, thanks for taking time out of your day. Thanks for rescheduling. I know it's crazy. We're at the end of the school year here with kiddos as we're taping this. But thanks for taking time out of your day to hang out with my audience and serve them today. Yeah, thanks for asking me. And like you said, this is such an important skill to have because if you think about it, we're in a time when more people than ever have microphones, megaphones, platforms, influence, social media, and a lot of people are just winging it. I mean, we we joked before about the name of my course is Stop Wing It, but I named it that because a lot of us were never taught this skill of how to organize your content and craft a message that's compelling, that makes the impact you want to make. So it's really not just speaking. It's really just helping people make the impact they want to make with their words. Yeah. So like, let's, let's take that out a little bit, like explain how can craft learning how to speak it be, mm-hmm. be like, learn what you know how to do. You've yeah. been on stages for years. Yeah. How can that help my business? Like just big picture, 30,000 foot view. How can that help my business or my, my audience's business? Well, if you think about it, the most basic premise of um, sales or marketing is, is people buy from those they know, like, and trust. So in our marketing and our business, a lot of um, businesses that are brand based, personality based, we're always trying to make connections with our audience, make connections and build relationships with our customers. That's what we do through email marketing. We're building a relationship. We're not just selling to them. We're building this relationship. Well, what's so interesting is you can do that with your words. You can do that with your speaking, with your content. So it's not just, let me put out a piece of content that's informational. How You could do that, but how can you take that a step further and incorporate story, humor, personality, where at the end of that article or blog or webinar or interview, they're going, man, I love that guy, Graham. What else does he have? Like, I feel like he gets me. I feel like he knows me. And the reality is that information, just flat, basic statistics research does not change lives. We don't make purchasing decisions or any decisions with that part of our brain, that very um, tangible numbers part of our brain. We make decisions based on the feelings part of our brain. Mm -hmm. So you have an opportunity with your voice, with your words, with your connection with your audience to build a relationship with them even further. And a lot of that comes through content and connection and storytelling. Yeah, I love that. I mean, we're, we're in a world where everything is content. Mm-hmm. And and you're seeing brands like I think about brick and mortar brands like the Home Depots and the Gaps right. and like they they have to make content and they yeah. and then if they don't have people in house to create content they're going to partner with influencers and people right. to tell stories or show video and so it, more than ever we can't hide behind just a, an offer and a checkout page like we have to go out in the world and 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 teach something or share something or connect with people. And so I love content marketing. So I'm, I'm my people are all about content. Um, and I never thought of um, public speaking. I just thought it was like a separate thing that like I nerd out. Like I, I have a vision and a, and a dream of being on more stages. And I feel like that's where God's calling me to. And like I came from the music world. So I was always on stage and then God took me off of that stage and I've been doing business and then like I'm behind a camera all the day, all, all the time. So I like content, but I'm still like alone in my office. There's yeah. nobody here, you know, so it's like I miss the energy. So I, I personally want to be on the stage, but th- it's really the same thing, which is we are trying to connect. And like you said, it's not just information. So one of the things that um, I, I was reading on your website and then I was going through your courses, one of the things that you really teach well, and I think it relates to everything we're doing, especially sales copy and marketing is you, you get us to think about what is the problem mm-hmm. that this piece of content or this talk or this speech right. or whatever is solving. Right. And it sounds like an obvious question. What is the, what is the problem that you, you're solving in this? It could even be a 60 second TikTok. You know, what is the right. problem? Right. Um, can you explain why that you call it the one thing? Like what is mm-hmm. it? And, and like, what is this about? And what yep. a problem does it solve? Like, can you explain why this is so missed and what, what's happening here? And what's, because when I look at your content, I can tell now, 
I'm reverse yeah, engineering. You can see, tell what I'm doing. I see what you're doing on, on Instagram. I'm like, wow, this is this is a reason why I, I can't stop watching this and, and I connect to it because she's using this framework. Can you just Sorry. unpack that problem, the one thing concept a little bit? Because I think it's really helpful. Yes. So, and, and you keep using the word framework, which I love because I think the idea of speaking or crafting a message of any type, whether you're, I mean, it could be writing a book, writing an SEO article, writing a YouTube video, you know, you're, you're still crafting it in some way. And it's so intimidating when you're looking at a blank page. You're like, I have all these ideas. I have all these things to say. I want to help people. And you just kind of throw them on there and hope it goes well. And then afterwards, you're like, I don't know if that went well at all. And so I want to give people a framework. And the reality is this framework is not something I came up with in the sense of the origination, the idea. The framework follows a basic story arc. Story has been around since the beginning. And so this is how our brain thinks. Our brain thinks in story. It understands in story. And so the piece of the story framework that most people miss when crafting a message is the problem. And I want to camp here for just a second because if if your audience listens to this and they do this one thing instantly, they are going to make more of an impact in their messaging, any type of messaging, sales messaging, Instagram, TikTok, doesn't matter. So often we are so deep in our content and we love our content. We know our content. We want to teach our content that we jump to the solution. And we bypass the problem. And so we just start rapid fire information mm-hmm. here, solution, solution, solution. So I came from Ramsey Solutions, which helps people get out of debt. So that might look like for a financial coach, it might look like crafting a blog or writing a book or going on stage and going, you need a budget. You need a budget. Stop spending that money. You need a budget. Just stop spending so much budget, budget, budget. And you're like, okay, okay right? Like, yeah. like you're not compelled. You're mostly nope. just feel like you're being yelled at because you are. And so what happens is that the person is so overwhelmed with just a solution. You have not bought them into Mm. why that's a problem for them. So here's what this looks like. It looks like taking your content, every person that's listening right now, your content is a solution to something, but you've got to take the time to back out of your solution and go, what problem is this solution solving? And you're going to spend time talking about that in every message, in every TikTok, in every blog or article or book or stage talk. And what that looks like is, if I was a financial coach, and back in the early days of speaking, we all only spoke on money. All the Ramsey speakers spoke on money. So I have spoken about money for years. And so it looks like getting on stage and going, I know what it's like to be in debt. I know what it's like to give my credit card to the server at a dinner with friends and be so scared that that server is going to come back and tell me my card has declined in front of everyone. That's shame. I know what it's like to go to the mailbox back when we got paper bills and be so scared that I was going to get these bills and I couldn't afford it. I know what it's like to get paid on Friday and all that money is gone before you even get to deposit the check. I know what it's like. And I've got chills. Easy enough. I tell those stories because I do know what it's like because I remember when you spend some time talking about the problems we face, me speaker Mm -hmm. and you audience member that we face, then you build empathy, trust, connection, Uh, uh, credibility. There's so much that happens in this problem section of a talk and of of a message. But here's what really happens. The most important thing that happens is you answer the question their brain is thinking, which is, what's in it for me? Your human brain, every single human brain is wired for survival. So all day, every day, we are filtering out information that doesn't apply to us. Think about social media. Okay, I've got my phone here. Graham, if you and I are scrolling through Instagram, right? We're scrolling, we're scrolling. There's something that we stop at. Why? Because it did something for us, mm-hmm. entertained us, informed us. It, it answered the question our brain is thinking, which is what's in it for me. We scroll past all the crap that does it, yep. that doesn't answer that question. Because at our most primal level, we are wired for survival and that's a selfish survival place. And so our brain is always going, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? Every person right now, including you and I, Graham, have been in talks, been listening to speakers, and we're going, oh, get to the point, get to the point, yeah. right? Because they did not connect with you on how whatever they're about to say applies to you. So it's simply backing out of your solutions, whatever your solution is, how to get out of debt, how to build a business, how to grow a YouTube channel, how to lose weight, how to parent, how to whatever that is, back out of that and go, what's the problem? The problem is, you're making it up as you go. The problem is you, you're not making any money in your business. The problem is you've got all these ideas. You don't know how to organize them. The problem is spend some time at the problem. And when you do that, you're answering the question, 
your audience brain is thinking, which is what's in it for me. And they scoot a little closer and they go, Oh, I want, I want to know about that. T- tell mm-hmm. me, tell me, Graham, tell me, how do I organize? Tell me how to build a business. Tell- oh, okay. And they're hanging on your every word for your solution. They can actually receive it when you spend time to talk about the problem. It's so good. I mean, that's, it's amazing how obvious that is when you, right, when you say it. it. Yeah. And, but then if you stop and think about, like if, if you're a content creator and you go back and look at your content, I mean, and you're honest with yourself, it's a little embarrassing, at, the time, at least for me. I think about my early stuff. I was so excited to get to the thing I wanted to teach. You know, I started out teaching music and recording and that, that's what my first business was. And I, was, I just wanted to teach people the way to make it work and sound good on a budget. And, it, and, and I would just jump right into it, assuming because I think this is what I did. I assumed they know that the problem is. That's right. that's why they're. And a lot of times, yeah, if they're googling how to you know record music on a budget, they instinctively know the problem. So I'm assuming you know the problem. I'm just going to give you what you want, and won't you be grateful that I'm jumping right to the point? <laughs> I saved you time. <laughs> right. I thought I was doing them a favor, and and I I realized that like oh I need to address the problem. And then here's my issue, uh, Christy, is I would start to inject the problem but not spend enough time on it. Right, right. You know, like I I would address it, but I wanted to quickly get to the solution because I thought I was wasting their time. Right. And I know people are a little bit different and and there's different people. Some people just are how people. They just want to get right to the how. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. some people are like, why does this matter? And you really have to show them the why. But I think what you're describing, what I've been trying to learn through, originally through copywriting and then going through your courses, I'm like, this is she's teaching the same stuff and related to speaking, this makes so much mm-hmm. sense, is I need to show them the problem, make them feel the problem, and show them that I have felt the problem, which you just did really well with those examples, and spend a little bit more time than I thought I would to get the buy-in, to get the lean-in like you described. And that's maybe where a lot of us are missing, is maybe we're sharing the problem, but not spending enough time on it. Okay, let's talk about that because, and I, and, and I think this is important to um, talk about the differences. Different mediums, um, are, are more conducive to certain aspects of the format. So as let's do the most basic format, problem, solution, action. Um, the, the problem part of the talk, when you spend a lot of time on the problem part of the talk, that lends itself to a very inspirational talk. So if you've got these three sections of the talk, they're not created equal. You might spend a lot of time on problem and solution and a little bit of action. That would be a highly inspirational talk. If you're on a big stage in a big arena where someone's not taking notes and they're not going to walk out of there and have 47 steps, you want that to be a highly inspirational talk. It's an arena type of talk. It's a big event type of talk. That's it. Mm-hmm. That, that's going to be a lot of time on the problem. But let's say you're leading a workshop where people expect the tactical or you're leading a class, you're a teacher and or you're leading a course. You don't want a course to be highly inspirational and no takeaway. So you would actually flip that where you would spend a little bit of time on the problem, enough time where they care, where they're leaned in, but you're going to have a really long action section. You're going to have a really heavy, um, heavy loaded back end of your talk where it is very tactical because that's Mm -hmm. the nature of the medium. Something in the middle, like let's say a podcast, you get to decide. You get to decide if your podcast is highly inspirational or highly tactical, or maybe some are one, some are the other. And so when you think about what do I want to achieve through this talk, what's the impact I want to make, if you want people to walk out of that arena feeling confident and inspired, you're probably going to have a highly inspirational talk and you're going to really spend time talking about fear and set fear up as the enemy, just like Donald Miller's story brand. This is the villain. Yeah. We're going to conquer fear. And we're going to talk about confidence. And then the takeaway is, Here's one step you can take today to be more confident. But if you're in a workshop or a course or something like that, a classroom, then maybe you're going to build that out where it is a smaller setup of the problem, but you're really going to unpack the action. So depending on the impact you want to make and the medium will sometimes inform the way this format and the um, framework, as you described it, flexes to help you meet your needs. And that's so useful, guys, to think about what you're saying, Christy, that you've got this problem, solution, action, and they all need to be there. It's just how much time you spend on them and the medium dictates it. And I'll give you an example. Like I'm, I'm newer to a lot of this stuff, but I've done different kinds of content, but I just delivered a TEDx talk and it was like a bucket list thing for me. And so get, I had 12 minutes, Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, to to get, you know, get on a stage. Basically nobody knows who you are, why they should care about you. They're not there for you. Um, right. And then you're trying to set up this idea, this big idea, because that's what Ted's all about is, is sharing ideas. 
and then it's supposed to be able to apply to them. They're supposed to be able to walk away with, well, what, what can I do with this idea, right? It right. shouldn't be just theoretical. And so it was a very interesting process. But if you look at that 12 minutes, if you were to chop it up and look at my script for that, because I had to be heavily scripted and memorized, but um, right, right. it's mostly story right. setting up the problem uh, and it's a very little bit on here's the big idea, maybe like three sentences or two sentences, and then a little bit more on how you can apply the idea to your life. So it's probably like 80% problem right. and then 5% the solution and 15% the action and then it's right. over. And, right. and that's really weird for me. Whereas like I was just telling you, Christy, before this call, I'm prepping for this workshop, the keynote type thing that I'm doing for Kajabi. And they wanted for this VIP day to have more workshop feel for these talks. So it will be a shorter problem solution. And then we're going to spend like 30 minutes real time right. workshopping these right. principles so right. they can walk away with some action steps. So it's like the same elements are there, but I'm having to zhuzh them based off of the meeting, right. which I think is very helpful to, to carry with you. That's right. And it's interesting too, because it's something that just jumped out to me as you were talking. And this is probably not the case with the Kajabi event, but if someone is booked to speak at an event or be a guest in a workshop or a webinar or a classroom, it's your job as the speaker to teach the client what they need and what you need to be successful. So I'll give you an example. I have spoken for, you know, 13, 14 years at this point in every possible event venue you can imagine. So I got stories for days, Graham. Like I've got so many stories of good events, bad events, weird events, all the yep. things. But one of the things I've run into multiple times is you often have people planning events and booking speakers that don't know how to speak. So what that means is they will ask things of you that set you up to fail without realizing it. Oh boy. Okay. So let's just give, let me give you an example. Yeah. Hey, Christy, we want you to come speak at our, um, at our company. It's a fortune 500 company. We want you to speak to all of our employees and we want you to speak to them about budgeting and time management and weight loss. And we also <laughs> want you to teach them how to cut up their credit cards and go ahead and get life insurance. Yeah. Like, do we have that, 13 days? That's, yeah. that's not going to work. Those are too many ideas. No, no, no. Just do a little bit of each idea. Chris. No, that's not going to work. It's too many ideas. Well, well, you could just spend five minutes on each idea. No, I have to teach them that will not work. Yeah. They cannot understand all of these different concepts in one time that will not work. We need to pick one idea. Which one do you want? Do you want time management? Do you want money? I can, I can do a really great job on one of those, but these are all separate ideas. And that goes back to what you asked a few minutes ago, where your audience can only consume one main idea. They can only consume one topic or not even within a topic. If I said life balance, you've got to take one angle on it. Money, you gotta take one angle. You can't have 15 angles and introduce 15 new ideas because what will happen is, even if you're a great storyteller, you make them laugh, you make them cry, you have fun, they love you at the end, what will happen is they will walk out and they will tell their friend, oh my gosh, that Graham, he was such a great speaker. And the friend will say, awesome, what'd he speak on? And they're like, uh, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't remember, really remember what he said because he said too many things. Yeah. And so you've gotta pick one main idea. If and the, the exercise I walk you through in my course that you referred to is you need to be able to tell me in one sentence, what is the one main idea of your talk? One sentence, one, think of a thesis statement back in school yeah. days. You got to be able to say it in one sentence. And the, the reality is getting that clear and concise is very difficult. Anyone can tell me in 45 minutes what their idea is. Anyone can talk in paragraphs. You get one sentence. And I think it was, um, Albert Einstein that said, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Wow. And so we have to do the work as content creators to boil our content for that particular message down to one main idea where if you say to me, Christy, what is the one thesis statement of your fear talk? Do it scared. What is the one thesis statement of your life balance talk? Life balance is living from your values. I need to be able to, and then everything else in the talk points to that thesis statement. The problem sets yeah. it up, the solution unpacks it, the action applies it, the stories point to it, and then you walk out and Graham comes to my fear talk and everybody's like, oh, Graham's like, oh my gosh, Christy's such a great speaker. And I'm like, really, what'd she speak on? She said, do it scared, do it scared. Like it's, the, the, you know, you don't have to be fearless to do the thing, you can do it while you're scared. And you got it, man, you got it yeah. and you're gonna do something about it when you remember it. Yeah, that's what I, I loved about, you beat that in, in my head in the course and you do it so well and, you, and it's, it was a light bulb moment for me because um, I, I, I've like my superpowers. I could talk all day, and that's the negative of that. Is same, that same, Graham. You could same. talk all day. No one knows what you said. <laughs> right. So, and so I, I was thinking about it, and like, um, you know, the, 
I live in Tampa, right? And they're, you know, you're in Nashville and, and both cities are like booming, but like in Tampa, there's cranes everywhere and there's a building, you know, condos everywhere, just more and more buildings. So I'm, I'm watching these condos go up and you know when they're about to go up, but like nothing happens for like weeks and weeks and weeks. They're like digging the foundation stuff and it feels like, are those guys doing anything? And then all right, of a sudden, right. one week, you start to see this thing fly right. up. And I was thinking about it because I just want to, I love teaching and I love creating content. I actually like putting slides together. I'm a weirdo. And I, so I love to like, build the thing because I, I can imagine sharing it with somebody and helping right. them that I want to get to that so quickly and teach all the cool things. But what you're forcing me to do is stop and think about what's the problem statement and then like what's the thesis statement? Like what's the one thing this talks about right. in one sentence? Right. And it's it's a slow process. It is. But so it's like slowing down to go fast. Right? Yes. It's like I slow have to slow down and it's frustrating. But if I do the time and do the work to create that statement, then I can fly because I know what the talk's about and I can Sorry. easily put it together. So it's almost like those those skyscrapers. It's slow, slow, slow. But once that foundation's built, you can just throw that thing up there and you know it's gonna work. And so that's been a shift for me in the way I'm thinking about content creation. Well, and my hope for you and my hope for everyone is that what ha what occurred for me occurs for you. And that is that it's only slow at first. It becomes muscle memory. You will get to a point, Graham, where you're writing talks and you don't think what comes first. You'll just be like intro story, transition statement. Here's yeah. the problem here. Like it becomes so ingrained in you that you're not having to consciously think of it. It's just like when I go do a social media reel, I don't think set up the problem first. It just comes out of me naturally. Yeah. You know what's so frustrating is when God takes forever. Like, isn't he so slow sometimes? Like, you are you're, you got a promise and then he's taking forever. Problem, problem. problem. I'm setting yeah. up the problem. And then I take you to what I've learned or I take you to what he showed me or I take you to what, you know. And so I don't consciously think that. And I think that it is slow at first because there's a learning curve because it's new. But what I'm trying to do is take what I learned 12 years of being on all these stages, learning by literally being thrown in the deep end of speaking. No one taught me this, but I became a student on stage. I also wow. became a student of other incredible speakers. Um, the one main thing, the one idea um, came from Andy Stanley's book, Communicating for a Change. Wow. Uh, stories came from Carmine Gallo's book, Talk Like Ted. Great I book. I learn and then I put these together with my experience and go, okay, here's my framework that I think uniquely offers something to the marketplace and helps people in a new way. And so I just, my hope would be that it gets easier and easier as you go, but you're right. It takes, it takes time to slow down, but here's the, the why of that, that I want to bring it back to your audience. You are there for one reason and one reason only, and that is to make an impact. Now you can decide what your impact is. Your impact could be sales, it could be salvations at Easter Sunday, it could be whatever, help them get out of debt, buy your thing, you can decide. But if you remember that you're there to make a very specific impact, then I think it motivates you to back out of there and go, let me slow down because everything I teach you is towards that impact. It is how can you be the most effective, most compelling, most memorable, most entertaining, most trustworthy content creator and speaker that they have heard. And if you do what I teach you to do, everything from adding jokes when you don't think you're funny, add them anyway, because yeah. it's going to help you make the impact. Then you go, oh, okay, I'll learn this new skill because yeah. I really want to make that impact. Oh, it's so, so good. And I want to get into speaking on the, the, the craft of it in just a second. But one thought I had when you were talking about the one thing related to all of that is I'm realizing this is in real time that I and I've been arrogant in the past when I've looked at I'm, I'm thinking about authors because a book is just another medium for, for a message. Right. right. I'm, I'm arrogant when I think about I've looked at books and said, you know, that book has some good ideas, but it's it's incomplete. It's like missing some other things. And I'm realizing sort of in real time that what makes a book great is not that it covers everything in the subject, if it's a money book or mm -hmm. whatever, it's that it picks its one thing, mm -hmm. its one angle, and that's mm -hmm. what makes you notice it. So that's it makes right. it sell. People can, oh, what's Rich Dad Poor Dad about? Well, it's about like, you know, the, the rich don't work for money. You know, it's these two different mindsets. And like, it's, it's not complete. Or uh, David Box, Automatic Millionaire. Like that's not a complete money book, but what's it all about? Automate your finances, and like right. it's the one thing you can do to make it happen. It's it's an interesting concept of like, no, th I'm the one that's missing it. They're the one that gets it as the master <laughs> craftsman for their messages. They're like, what's one message I can put in a book that people remember? What is this book about ultimately? Uh -huh. And I can't cover everything. So I'm going to cover the thing that I want them to remember. So I'm just real time spitballing here that I think I see this more often than not that. I can think 
oh, I want to shove all the good stuff in there. And that's mm -hmm. what actually waters down the message, right? That they don't remember anything to your point. Well, and it's interesting too, because I think that we can only consume so much information at a time and in one sitting. And so it really does serve your audience well to break it up into topics or themes or whatever. So it's like, you know, we, we do live in this world where I feel like people can, um, you know, especially on social media, they can get entitled. They can feel like, well, you, you know, I write a whole book on apples. They're like, well, you didn't talk about oranges. So I guess <laughs> yeah. you hate oranges. It's like, no, man, I'm just writing about apples. Maybe my next book is oranges. I don't know, but just stick around. I'll come out. That's like so funny. it's, it's just, you, you have to have the confidence to, and it goes back to even as a speaker or, um, guest, you go into an event, you go into a venue, you're going on someone's show. You have to have the confidence to help them help you, help me help you because you want to be successful. And they may come and say, talk about all the fruit. And you're like, actually, I'm going to be the most effective if we pick one thing. What do That's you think? And, 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 and let them speak into it. They're the expert on their audience and their company or their platform. So they can say, hey, here's all the things I feel really um, qualified to teach on. What do you feel like is the, the biggest problem your audience has? What do you feel like is the biggest felt need and, and let's go there. Let's, let's really do a deep dive on that or really drill it home. Because the reality is the more time you spend on it, it, it the more likely they're going to act on it. And that's where I go back to impact because I don't want people walking out of ever hearing me talk, whether it's a podcast or a stage or whatever. I don't want people to walk away and go, hmm, that was good. And nothing changes in their life. Yeah. I did. We both just spend an hour together for you to go. Yeah. I got entertained for now. No, 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 no. I want, I want to change your life. Yes. Well, if you're asking people to change their life, Graham, change their life, weight loss, money, finances, faith, business. If you're asking them to change, that's a big freaking ask for 12 minutes or 30 minutes or 45 minutes of your time. So spend some time compelling them, spend some time building trust with them, getting by and helping you're, you're selling an idea to them. And that takes time. If you want them to walk away and throw the cookies out or put their idea on Etsy or start a YouTube channel, you're changing brain patterns. You're put, trying to push past fear. You're trying to go against all their habits and baggage. That's a big undertaking. So yes, let's pick the oranges. Let's pick yeah. one thing and really compel them to increase the likelihood of the impact, to increase the likelihood of the life change that I believe we're all going for. Hey friend, we'll get back to the episode in just a moment, but I wanted to give you a gift for hanging out with me today. I want to give you my 30 day online income jumpstart guide. This is a four week checklist bullet points to go from zero audience, zero customers, maybe even zero idea of what your business should be to putting money in your pocket 30 days from now. It won't be a million dollars in 30 days, but it will be money in your pocket. You will have figured out your idea. You will have tested your idea. You will have launched your idea and taken massive action towards building a business and a life that you love. If you already know your business idea, but you've been sitting around and you haven't taken action on it, then you need this guy because it'll walk you through a four-week plan to go from where you are to putting money in your pocket in 30 days. And if you've never figured out what your business idea is and you have no followers online and no audience, it's okay. This will help you start at zero. I promise you. It's a PDF. It's fast. It's easy to read. It's not an ebook. You don't have to spend a lot of time on this. It's more about taking action and doing the right things in the right order. And it's free as my gift to you. So just go to grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart to get your 30 day online income jumpstart guide. It's grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart. Now back to the episode. So, so good. I love it. Okay. So this, I mean, this is like a master class in like how to craft a message we've been covering and this can apply to anything, not just speaking on stage That's as right. we've been covering, but let's like, can we talk about maybe the business of speaking? Yeah. Because yeah. I have a lot of people, myself included, that are trying to like more intentionally get on stages. Um, and it could be either because they want to get paid to speak and mm -hmm. or drive sales of their yeah. business and use those stages, much like I would get on someone's webinar, that's a virtual yes. stage, but get on physical stages to drive the business. So um, let's talk about the process like of getting your first paid speaking gig. Yep. Yep. Where, where does someone begin? And is it like, do you, are you of the mindset of just do all the free speaking gigs and, and be at birthday parties speaking? And then, or is there a, a strategy for someone who has, let maybe let's say they've crafted their message and they're doing online content, but they haven't gotten on stages. How do I get that first paid speaking gig? Okay, well, here's what's interesting, and this is what I've seen, and this may not be true for your audience, but in case it is, let's just start here. Often, when it comes to getting that first paid gig, 
the barrier is not the opportunity. The barrier is not the money. The barrier is not um, the, the, the client's belief in you. The barrier is you waiting for permission. Ooh. The barrier is someone going, well, do I tell them I've never been paid before? No, no, <laughs> fool, no. Do you don't need to tell them you're the first stupid person to pay me? No, you don't tell them that. You just go, oh, my speaking God. fee is $1,000 for a keynote and you can send the check here. Can't wait to book my calendar. Like you just <laughs> act like you've been doing this all along. That's so um, funny. But I think the, the biggest barrier is belief. The biggest barrier mm-hmm. is confidence and waiting for permission for someone to go, yes, you're allowed to get paid. Yes, you're allowed to charge a fee. Yes, you're allowed to do this. And the reality is the only difference between you and someone else that's out there getting paid is they believe that they can. And mm-hmm. so, um, you know, Graham, you've gone through my start getting books course. Yep. So much of the information in that course is very basic. Set up a landing page. Yeah. Get photos of you. This is not like rocket science, but you have to keep it that basic because so many people feel like that they're not allowed to do it. And so I'm just basically giving them permission here. You have permission to do this and here's the steps you take. You can speak for free. And I'll be honest, you know, Pete Vargas has challenged me so much on this because I'm going, I go, I go back and forth on it. Yes, you could speak for free because you could make more money in your business if you have a back end strategy for conversions, sure. for lead magnets and for um, email campaigns and all that. You can do that. But if you want to build a business as a speaker where you are charging a fee and commanding a good fee, which by the way, for anyone that doesn't know the speaking world, fees are high. Fees are very high. Like you, a low budget event is a thousand to three thousand dollars. That's a, that's an entry level keynote yeah. fee. Um, the church world's going to be less. The church world is going to be, you know, half or less of that sometimes, depending on the size of the church. Some churches have huge budgets, just like businesses. You get into the speaking world where you've been doing this a little bit, you've built a business, you have a story to tell, you have content. You're talking about ten to thirty thousand dollars mid range yeah. for a keynote. And you got some big big time people that are charging fifty, sixty, over a hundred thousand dollars for one hour of your time. Come on now. Come on, somebody. One hour. Yeah. And and then and then you talk about the back end. You can yeah. still pitch and monetize in your yes. business, plus the brand recognition and so on. So it is a very um, profitable, lucrative business. You do have to start somewhere. So if you get booked for an event, here, here's what I'd say. Try to find something that can benefit you and your business more than just reps. Reps are beneficial. Just getting the experience of being on a stage, telling a joke and no one laughs and you make a mental note, don't tell that joke again. Or yep. fix that joke till it's funny. Like that, that'll teach you, man. So, so being on the stage and getting the reps, you do get better and better. But... But there's also other ways that you can benefit from an event. So one way would be capturing leads. You can pitch a lead magnet and we can circle back to this. I'm actually going to talk about that this a little bit later today when we're on a a coaching call, Graham, because I think this is something that people need to understand when to pitch, how to pitch. Yes, I was going to ask, yeah. On stage. Mm -hmm. And so you could pitch either your product, your service, your business, um, or your your email journey, your your lead magnet, your email list. Um, But you also might want to get on that stage just for the photos. You might yeah. want to get on that stage just to bring so a photographer good. or a friend and say, I, I will do that event for free because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my brother, John, take photos of me on this massive stage, the lights and the production, and the AV and this huge crowd so that I can put on my website to yep. show that I've spoken on these big stages, which is true. So that gives you then photos that you otherwise wouldn't have. So try to find something. And then, and then the reality is here's the reality, the tough, the tough reality of the event world. Event planners, 99% of the time, will get you as cheap as they can get you. Mm. If they can get you for free, they will. If you, and you have a choice on if you want to do it or not. Mm. And if you want to hold your fee, then you can hold your fee and you may miss that event, but you may get another one. Um, or they may rise and say they suddenly found room in the budget for that event. Mm. But it's this, it's this dance where you quote your fee, they quote lower, you go back and forth. And the reality is it's all, I don't want to say monopoly money because it's not monopoly money. It's real money, but it's all just a dance. It's a dance. Yeah. Like the budget was made up by someone. The numbers are always flexible depending on who they want, how bad they want them. And you're setting your fees, which are numbers you made up. And it's how bad you want this event. So it's this dance and you just got to be willing to dance the dance until you get to a um, an agreement that both you and the client feel good about. The numbers, the terms and all that. 
Man, you said three. So there's three things in there that I love. One is um, you started off by saying, you know, no one's going to give you permission. You have to give yourself permission to do the thing. And I remember when I pivoted from uh, teaching the music recording and I had like the largest YouTube channel on the music production space. That's I was known as the music guy. And I had felt for years God called me to teach this business model because it set me free, my family free. And, and I was more interested in that. And I had I had done some like free coaching on the side for people who just wanted to know how to do it. But when I realized I need to step out in the world and be a coach and like help people with their business online specifically, I was like, how do I, how do, how do I how to do that? And I was like, well, maybe I just go online and say, Hey, I'm a business coach. And <laughs> if you want to hire me, you can hire me. And so I tried that. And then people, <laughs> people wanted, they hired me. They're like, Oh, what's crazy, your fee? right? Crazy, what's right? Your fee? So I just made like, up a fee. It was so like, funny. That's it? That was it. There was no ceremony. I didn't get like <laughs> tassels and a little hat. Um, and, and I just gave myself permission. I just did it. And it felt weird, right? So it felt mm -hmm. awkward at first because it's it's not that you're faking it till you make it, but you're stepping into a new identity that you haven't right. lived in for a while that's probably been there, but you just haven't ex lived it out. And so I appreciate you saying that. You just have to almost start it. Yeah. Same thing with me now. I want, I want to be a speaker, author. Wrote my first book. No one gave me permission to write a book. I just had to decide, okay, how do I write a book? And I took right. Michael Hyatt's course and I had my buddy Jordan Rayner who's been an author. I'm like, what do I do? Do I get published, self-published? Right. Just start the process. That's right. Same thing with speaking. I want to give a TEDx talk. How do I do that? I, no one, I'm not a speaker, but I can become one. So give yourself permission. I love that. Um, you also talked about the idea of st stages can have different wins. Mm -hmm. Like, and you get to decide, is it to get paid? Is it to collect emails, to drive right. sales? Is it for the credibility of the stage I was on or the people I've been on stages with people like right. Christy Wright right. So right. 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 or the photos? I mean, there's a lot of different wins. Mm -hmm. Know the win of why you're doing that event because there could be different wins, which I love. Um, and then what was the last thing you said? You're talking about, oh no, your fees. You're negotiating your fees. Do you agree with this? John Gordon, he's in our, the Wellspring as well, that we're mm -hmm. a group. Um, oh, I didn't know he was in it. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So he's, I've been talking to him and I, I'm like, okay, I don't, you know, speaking and fees. And so what he said was very similar. He said, but you have to like state your value first. Like right. here's what your speaking fee is. And then uh, be willing to take less if you want to, but you, you start with what you think you're worth right. so that they right. can anchor you. Well, he's, he says 10,000. Well, you know, right. we ain't got 10,000. We can give you five. Mm, okay. Maybe I'll, uh, for you, I'm willing to work with you, That's right. but you started with, I feel like I'm worth 10,000 or 20 right. or whatever it is. Do you agree with that? And how, how does that negotiation process look like for you? Like you state your ideal and you're, you're willing to shush or what? Yep. Yeah. So great question. So my, what's my story is a little bit different because my fee was set by Ramsey because I grew uh, up yes. in Ramsey. I was a project manager. So I really learned the fees of the speaking world under the, the safety net of an organization. So while that's not normal, the fees are s still true out in the real world with me being on my own. So I would say what I have found is, um, typically the nonprofit and church world, which I kind of have one foot in both camps and have my whole time, my whole life. And I love that. Um, typically nonprofit and church world is about half in terms of what they can afford with their fees. Sometimes it's even less than that, but you just need to know if you are, if you feel called to speak in churches, preach, speak at Christian events, just know it's going to be a lower fee, most likely than the business world that have bigger budgets there. So on. So I love that advice from John Gordon, because here's, here's what I would say. I think some people they just see what they could get. And there's an integrity issue on that for me. Mm. Set a fee based on what you have done. And I, I give some ranges in my um, course, Start Getting Books. So like, if you've done nothing, then maybe your $500 to a thousand as a starting person, you've never spoken, you've never written a book, you've never built a business, you've never done anything, you've just got something you wanna say. Okay, maybe you start at 500 to a thousand. If you've done something, you've built a business, you've done some things, it might be one to 3,000 as a starting point. Yeah. And then you go up from there. So, so when you, when you know what your fee is, when you just decide to your point, you just decide, decide what it is. You quote it to the client and always, <clears throat> let me say this, always ask for their budget first, mm. always ask for their budget first, because if I, I'll get requests and it, and it is, you know, what's the name, what's the event, what's the date, what's your budget. And I get the budget and the budget is a thousand dollars. My fee is way over a thousand dollars at yeah. this point. I'm a number two times best-selling author. All the things I've done, so I don't come back and go, "Well, my fee is this. Can you make it happen?" No, that would be so insulting. It would be yeah. is so rude. And so instead, I'm able to see their budget and say, "Thank you so much for thinking of me. That you know, my budget, my my fee is outside that budget, but I know you'll find a great speaker. I wish you right. all the best." And it just you handle it with more class yep. when you know their budget. It also gives you a range to know. 
Okay, if they come back and their budget is really close to yours, you're able to say, hey, here's my fee. Can you make that, you know, can you make that happen? And you've got a, just more information to work with. But when you know your fee and you stick to it, if someone comes along, and they're a friend of a friend or someone you went to middle school with or it's someone that you just feel really called to this ministry or you love what they're doing or you just the Holy Spirit drops and you say, say yes, say yes to this one. Then you could go, OK, my fee is this, mm-hmm. but I'm willing to do it for this budget for this event. Please don't share that because people do talk in the speaking world. Please don't share this. This is something I'm doing just for you. And uh-huh. and you're able to just handle it with care. I think these we have to remember these events are still relationships and people in the event world talk and the, because if you if you if your fee is ten thousand dollars and you don't quote that and you don't tell them that and someone comes in and they go hey um, Graham come speak for us for a thousand dollars and you just go okay they're gonna go tell John hey Graham was amazing he was only a thousand bucks hey yeah. Graham was amazing he was only a thousand bucks Graham was amazing you're gonna get all these requests and you come back go hey my fee is ten thousand like whoa 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 man I heard. Yeah. So you have to be very um, intentional and with care, set your fee. But then also, if you want to take an event for less, that's fine. Just make sure you handle it with care. Yeah, no, that makes so much sense. Are you of the mind that you should be like um, like the, the book, The Referable Speaker? It's like have just one talk. It's like your talk. You don't change it for other no, people. No, no. Like, because no. people want you to recreate the same experience that you gave at that event. So are you so... No, sounds like no. Tell me. No, tell me no, that. no. Okay, let me say this. I think, I think I. So one of the things I have, Graham, I have been placed in the business world and the faith world mm-hmm. for years, and I have learned from the business world and faith world for years. And one of the things I'll say is I see these extremes sometimes. So the business world could be like, here's my shtick, here's mm-hmm. my talk. Graham, go do the thing. You're like a performing circus monkey. Do the yeah. thing. And anyone in the audience that has heard you speak before is like, oh, he's doing the thing. Oh, that's that joke. Uh, but like, it's so inauthentic. Because you're just doing the show. You, 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 even, it's, you're just doing the show. Okay. That's the extreme of like you're literally scripting the whole thing. You're just doing the thing. The other extreme is I have seen in the faith world, and this is there's such truth to this, but I think, again, to a fault where it's like if you tell the same story twice, you're not authentic at all. Oh, yeah. If you if you yeah. teach the same concept, you're not authentic. you got to let the Holy Spirit lead. Don't write. Don't prepare. Just follow the Spirit's leading in every Every talk is a new, you know, we're totally making things up as we go. And there's a lack of preparation and a lack of care yeah. in stewarding that opportunity. So I really, I really feel like I like to teach people to blend both. So okay. you have core content that you teach. I have core content. If you said, Christy, come speak at my event on fear. I have multiple different fear talks I could give. And I might take these puzzle pieces and this one from this one and this one from this one and so on and, and craft one or I may do one very similar to how I've done it. But because I don't memorize fully, it's not going to be the exact same. And I might inject new stories that are real time that just happened last month. So it feels very sure. current and relevant and new. I'm not still telling that same story from 2015, you know, yeah. when I wrote the talk originally. Um, and then you leave room for the Holy Spirit to lead you. If you're a believer, if some, anyone's listening, you leave room for um, God to drop an idea in your heart while you're on stage and you tell that story you didn't plan to tell or you didn't write. And so I think it's a blend and a mix. Um, I always recommend, and you'll this will be familiar to you because you went through the Start Getting Booked course. I always recommend that you have a pre-event call with the client. Mm-hmm. And I never will speak on stage without having a pre-event call with the client because you can ask that client, tell me about your audience. What are they struggling with? Yep. What was last Sunday's sermon on at church? What's the speaker sure. before me going to be speaking on? What are the th- what are their fears and frustrations? What are their goals and motivations? It helps you understand them. And then you take your core content. Let's say it's 70% the same. But you're going to inject 20 to 30% mm-hmm. of unique, specific examples that make them feel like you're talking directly to them because you are. Wow. Now, are you rewriting the whole talk? No. But you're also not doing the talk, like doing a show, doing a shtick where you did not take them into consideration at all. And and I think that blend is really the perfect mix where you're not reinventing the wheel, but when they walk out of the room, they go, Graham was talking specifically to me. Yeah. And and if I was speaking at, um, like I, I, I got booked to speak at BIC, like the pen company yeah. uh, years ago. And they were telling me about like some corporate change they had just gone through in the last month and some leaders that had turned over. So I integrated that into my talk. So when I'm doing a talk on on motivating your team, I'm like, well, it's like what you guys went through last week. Wow. Yeah. And they feel like that whole talk 
was wow. customized for them. The whole talk was not customized for them. It was 70, 80% set that I then integrated stories or examples or, oh, it was like last week. My husband called me, da, da, da. Well, then they know that that's not a shit because it happened last week. Yeah. And so the more that you can integrate, again, best practices of the business world where you've got your core content and you might have one talk that's your core content. By this point, I have, you know, five or six or seven core messages, but I could write one like that if you ask me to on a different subject because I've done it so long. You might have multiple, but then you're going to leave room for customization, personalization, and even just if you're a believer to let God lead you even in real time when he might drop something on your heart that you didn't plan to say. Uh, I, I love that. Yeah, I feel like that's a sweet um, Goldilocks approach. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so to that point, if someone's starting out and, and they, let's say that, you know, they've got a podcast, they've got a YouTube channel, they have courses, they have the, the online business and they want to get into the speaking world. And in your start getting booked course, you did talk about like you're building out that landing page, your speaking page, which again, is sort of like your public signal, like, Hey, I'm a speaker. Um, and on that, I think you talked about like, Hey, these are the topics I talk about. Mm -hmm. How would you recommend someone figure out like, should they have, like, if they're starting out, they may not have a bunch of different topics. Yeah. Do they look at their YouTube content, their podcast content and say, what yeah. are the two or three big yep. themes and, and, and create those as talks that you could talk about? Is that how you would start that? That's exactly it. Um, that's exactly it. What are the themes? The themes that just keep coming up for me and have for years are fear, confidence, mm -hmm. a big, bold faith, obedience, um, marketing in business. Like when, yeah. when I talk about business, I want to talk about marketing more than anything else because that's mm -hmm. my background. That's what I love to talk about. Um, communication. So you look at what are the things that I could talk about nonstop and never get tired of? What are the things that I'm strongest and most confident in when I talk about them? What are the areas of my life that God has given me favor? Like, yeah. I don't really understand it, Graham, but God has given me favor in this topic of confidence. I think it'll be my next book will be on confidence. Cool. And it's not just confidence in yourself. It's also confidence in the Lord. Like I want to, I want to approach it from both sides, but, but you have that. It, everyone listening, you have those things that like, they're just your sweet spot. You love to talk about them. You have a ton of content on it. You're very confident in it. Um, and start there. When you're writing your first um, stage talk, if we're talking specifically about stage, when you're writing your first message for stage, pick the topic that you are the most confident in. Because you're going to be the best and have the most fun and make the most impact on stage when you're picking something that you are super confident in. Graham, if you said, hey, Christy, we want you to give a keynote on taxes, I'd be like, no, thank you. No, yep. thank you. Let me phone a friend and have someone yeah. step in, <laughs> right? Because we all have things we're really good at yeah. and things we're not. So pick the thing you're really good at because that's going to give you that quick win. It's going to help you feel very competent in your content, but also confident in your delivery of that content because you pick something that you know really well that's in your wheelhouse. I love that. So, okay, one final selfish question. Um, authors, if you're writing a book and you're speaking. You're a speaker. If I you're know writing a, friend, a book, you're a speaker. I know <laughs> tell a them, friend. Tell them that. I'm asking for a friend. Uh, so I, so I'm, writing, I'm writing book number two and, um, yeah. and I really feel like this book is I can, a huge part of a pivot that God's taking me through, which is like, mm -hmm. pivot's not the right word. I did pivot from music to business. Now I feel like it's an evolution or an expansion. I like my business model that I teach primarily because it allows me to live the life that I feel God's called me to live where I have time and margin and flexibility. Right. And I like to do things my way. I don't like to be told what to do. Amen. Any you great mate here. Yes. There we go. There we go. So, um, and so it's really, to me, the business is part of a life I want to live. So I want to be teaching content on like how to live a life well lived and business is always going to be a huge part of it. And it sounds like similar, similar to what you've done is that business is a huge component of what you like to do marketing, but you talk about so many other things. So, I'm, I'm this next book. The first book's about the business model. The next book is like, I'm starting to say, hello, I'm more than just a business guy. Um, and it's, and so I'm writing book number two, really excited about it. I have a feeling this lends itself to more of a keynote. What do you think, um, in terms of timing, can you, and should you start speaking about the book before it's come out yet? or only speak about the book when it's available for pre-order or wait till the book's out. And if someone has a book or they want to write a book, do they speak on it first, then write? Do they write, then speak? Does one lead to the other easier or does it really not matter? No, I think you talk about it as soon as possible. I think you talk about it as soon as possible and as much as possible. There is a um, very real fear in the content creation world that you're going to give it all away and no one's going to buy the thing. And that's just not true. Oh, yeah. Give it all away, they'll still buy the thing. Um, you think about it like how, when we listen to podcasts, no one goes, oh, well, I guess I should only put out one podcast because no one will ever listen to another podcast. No, we need constant encouragement 
and we need constant um, inspiration, constant teaching. So give a keynote. Each one of your books can be a keynote. Every and, and each chapter could be a keynote. You could you could break that out into a million different ways. But I think there's this scarcity mindset when we're feeling vulnerable. When as a creator, there's a vulnerability to creation, yeah. and and as we create, we think. Oh, if I give it all away, they won't buy the book when it comes out. Or if I give it all away, then it'll start getting, you know, people will criticize it or whatever. It's like, no, no, give it all away. Because what will happen is when you begin to teach on the book, speak on the book, you'll never literally read the book verbatim and put that out there. I mean, that's the audiobook for sale, sure. but, but a keynote is a, still a snapshot of it. Mm -hmm. Then what happens is when the book comes out, they say, oh, thank God, it's finally here. Yeah. That's the response wow. because you've been talking about it. And so, um, for example, I did not do this intentionally, though I would love to take credit that I did. It actually was accidental. We started Business Boutique from the Ramsey brand. I started that in 2015 and it started as an event. In 2016, it was multiple events, one day events, multiple events. I started the Business Boutique Academy, which is a coaching group, and I started the Business Boutique Podcast in 2016. The book came out in 2017. So it was wow. two two years, a year and a half of building this Business Boutique brand before the book came out. It was all things business. Well, when people came through my book signing line in 2017 on book tour, they did not say, what is this book about? Yeah. <laughs> they said, thank you so much. For, thank mm. God. Thank God it's finally here. I told Donald Miller, because he and I are friends, when his book Story Brand came out, I said, you're going to have the same ex experience because you have built the Story Brand brand yeah. that when the book comes out, they're going to go, thank God it's here. Versus, yeah. hey, I have a new book. It's called Business Boutique. And people are like, what's that? So yeah. I highly recommend building the brand, the message, dripping it, sampling it, teasing it, putting it, sharing it on stages, keynotes all over, podcast interviews. Um, and then when the book comes out, people go, oh my gosh, thank God it's here. I love that. And that's where I've been leaning, but I love that for two reasons. One, you spoke to one of the biggest myths about content creation is that you, if you give too much away, they won't buy anything. And that's one of the biggest fears that comes up. I had to write right. about it in my book, you know, like why I can't talk about the thing that's in my course on YouTube. It's like, that's how you sell the course. You gotta right, talk about right, it. Right. Uh, but, and then also that's, that's an, a mindset, right? It's an abundance versus scarcity mindset. But then I love the, the thank God it's here. I think to me, that makes so much sense. I feel like the books almost, I'll buy a book from a person who, even if I never read the book, like it's like a tip almost. I'm like, what you just shared was powerful. I've got to buy your book because then I know I have it because I might even it's just give it to somebody else. Yeah, or to or reference. Or to reference, or, yeah. Yeah. It's just, man, it's just so, I, I love that. So thank you for sharing that. And then um, I had one other question related to that. If you, like, let's take a book real quick. And, and it's got so much content. You say you're going to take the book, make it a key. Let's say your business boutique book, right? You've, you've taught so much stuff and had other people teach at your business boutique. Yep. Um, how, how much of the book, if you were going to go do a keynote on that, do you incorporate? Do you just try to take like, is it like chapter one, chapter two, where you're setting up the main yep. premise? Is that mostly the keynote? And then you, you, you fly through sort of the application steps. How do you like to think about that? That's a really good question. So business boutique is unique because it, it covers, it's really just a plan for your business. It covers high level, all things business. The book goes in more of a t deep dive and tactical because it's a book format, which you yeah. can and should in a book because people can reference. It's not audio only in a, in a uh, event setting where someone walks out of there and they're not going to remember. So you can get more tactical and you should in a book, but you could go about it a couple different angles. So you could, um, you could pick a chapter. So like, for example, chapter two of business boutique is fear. So I've got a keynote just on fear yeah, and then how to do it scared. Well, the reality is if you're confident and you believe in yourself, you can Google how to start a business. You don't need me. Yeah. The, the game changing, the game changing part of business boutique was not the plan. It was pushing past fear and making people believe. That's a good but distinction. Because if they're still scared, they're going to stay stuck. You can have yeah. all the information in the world, but if you don't believe you won't do it. The reality is if you're a go-getter, you can go figure out how to do it. That's what most people do. So I have a whole keynote on just chapter two, which is fear. Or to your point, I might have a keynote that is a high level of why you need a plan. You need mm. a plan, and here's the high level plan: foundation, tactical, marketing, putting your, you know, putting your, the, the the main tiers of the business plan. Um, take back your time. I'm probably I will have a keynote on life balance, and it is a high level of the book. Mm. I'm not gonna in every single step of the action go into a deep dive application sure. like how to set boundaries. I'm not gonna go into how to set boundaries. I'm just gonna say that you need them. Yeah. So it's just, if you think the book is ground level or let's say course, a course or coaching would be ground level. The book might be 10,000 foot. A keynote is going to be 30,000 foot view. So you're still That's covering helpful. it, but yeah. it's just at a higher level. 
That's, that's a super helpful visual. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I, I was trying to think about how to integrate all these different things and where the different pieces of content fit, but that makes so much sense. Even the 30,000 versus the 10,000 foot view. Cause I knew both were above the tactical level of the course or coaching. Yeah. Super, super helpful. And, and if you're listening, you can see how that's how like a keynote can sell a book, which can sell yes. a course, which can sell yes. coaching yes. and masterminds, yes. which, which people should, if they're authors, write their course into their book. Write mm. their lead magnets into their book. Pat yep. Flynn did this in Will It Fly? And I watched this. Yeah. It was brilliant. Where you are integrating that URL or the yep. QR code or whatever into the entire co- By the end of the book, they better have signed up for your email list because yeah. you integrated that intentionally. Oh, yes. But especially if you sell a book on Amazon where you don't get the customer yes. list if they buy your right. book. So right. Like, right. They're gone. They right. It's my book. Yeah. That's right. Oh man, that's so good. Okay. This is amazing. I, I've got a bajillion other questions for another day, but we'll wrap this up. This has been so helpful and tactical. Um, I, we have one segment we finish the show with every single week, which is called the golden rule segment. So we can get off the topic. It doesn't have to be about anything we talked about. It can be philosophical. Um, if your kids, which I know you have kids and I love your stories about, you know, car, cars and vans and, <laughs> junk and they don't pick up the stuff on the stairs. I feel like every time you reference that in your course, I'm like, my it's gosh, so that's what my wife says. She's like, y'all don't pick up the stuff on the stairs. Um, okay. Your kids, if they forget everything that you and your husband have been teaching them, like you guys are trying to raise these kiddos to know all the things to live a life well lived and all that stuff. If they forget it all, hmm. um, except for one piece of wisdom, one thing that, that they will actually carry with them for the rest of their lives, kind of mm-hmm. like a golden rule. What would you hope that would be? What would you want that to be? Well, this is going to be, I feel like this is going to be so churchy because I'm a, I'm a Christian. So I'm, this is going to be so churchy. It's going to be, oh, it's just going to be so typical. I just, I just pray that they know God is good. And I think yeah. if you know God is good, then it builds your confidence in him. It builds your confidence in yourself because he has you. Like if you just, if you, even when things are bad, if you just believe that he is good because his word says he's good. Um, and ultimately going to be good, um, things are going to be good, then I think that it just, it, it, everything goes through that filter. Everything, even the things that felt like rejection, the boy that dumped Mary Grace in high school, which I will come for him, by the way. <laughs> boy that bumped, she'll be like, well, God is good because he, yeah. he must have been protecting me from that joker. Mm. You know, it's yep. just, I think, I think if they know that, then they will follow after him and that everything else will fall into its place. I, I love that. Yeah, he's the good shepherd. I love that so much. If, if we don't believe God is good, it's really hard to listen to anything else he says. You yeah, know? that's that's um, true. Yeah, it's mm, good. That's so, so good. Okay, Christy, this has been amazing. Um, I know you have an incredible like resource for people that everyone should download, um, the Speaking Business Starter Kit. Can you tell us a little bit about that and where people can grab that? Yeah, well, it's so interesting. So this is here's a great takeaway for your, for your listeners that are building businesses. I created my first course in the fall, Stop Winging It how to face your fear, craft your, craft your message, and present like a pro. Um, all about how to craft your message from introduction to applause. And as I marketed this course, everyone kept saying, well, does this teach me how to get booked? Does this teach me how to get booked? And I was like, no, it doesn't. Because to be honest, Graham, I don't get as excited about that. I get excited about the, the messaging, yeah. the content. But I was like, well, I'll go create it. Yes, I will. I will go create that. So I created a bonus lesson. And then when I created that, it was so full of information. I was like, man, this is its own course. So then I turn that bonus lesson for marketing for my fall course into its own course called Start Getting Booked and then just pulled um, all the templates out of it and created that as just a free uh, resource for people if they want to get their speaking business started. So if they want to do that, this is going to give you a template for that pre-event call. What do you ask the client? This is going to give you a template for your landing page. What do you put on the landing page from your bio, your speaking bio to your photos to your the, the re- speaking request form, how you ask the budget. I give you a template for you to copy and paste so that you can go put that on your website and do it yourself. So good. Um, and it just gives you that that framework, like you said, where you know, I don't know what to put up there. It shows you what to put it up there. So it's christywright.com slash starter kit. And it's kind of been this evolution where it's like, as soon as I hear what the market wants, I'm like, I'll go create that just like we all do, you know? That's so good. Yeah, get that guys, christywright.com slash starter kit. And, and to your point, literally in now in retrospect, having gone through, like I consumed your material the, now like in reverse. So like lead right. magnet. Right. Uh, and then I was on your list and I heard about the start getting booked course. I'm like, well, perfect. That's what I need. I need to start getting booked. So I bought that. And then at the end of that, you're like, well, you know, if you want to craft your message, like not your right. book, like, well, <laughs> I need her other course. And so I got that. And then it's like, oh, well, I've got a mastermind. It's also like 
perfectly lined up of like mm-hmm. the next step. And here's the next step, you know, if you want to go deeper with me. And so you've just done a, a marvelous job of like, sh- of creating all the offers that are logical and linear and make Thank sense. You. So way to, way to listen to your market and create what they wanted because it'll only feed the other thing. Cause I, I bought all your stuff. So, well, <laughs> well, thank you for saying that, but it's, it's so interesting because, um, I tell my, I tell people that I coach in business, no dead ends. And that's true for yes. all of you. No dead ends. Don't let someone finish, start getting booked and go, that was amazing. Man. That's it. No, start. Uh, that was amazing. Oh, great. Well, here's my course on how to craft your message. Okay, that was amazing. No dead ends. Look at your no business. Look that's at your so business. Good. There should be no dead ends. Your book should lead to something. Your your podcast should lead to something. Your course should lead to another course. Your, everything should lead to something that probably realistically ends most bottom of funnel in a membership for you. Most most people probably would have that model. If you don't, then maybe it's a different bottom of funnel or one-on-one coaching or something like that. But no dead ends. If people loved that thing with you, give them an opportunity to continue to work with you because they probably want to. Dude, that's that's so gold right there. No <laughs> dead ends. Such a simple way to frame, yeah, that exact concept. Yeah. Man, I'm gonna have to go back through all my stuff now. I love that. <laughs> Hey, Christy, thanks for the time. Thanks for the generosity and the transparency and just bringing it and um, just dropping knowledge bombs for my people today. I think you guys can see why people love Christy. Um, And it's not just because she's got a lot of knowledge and experience. I hope you saw sort of in a meta way. It's the way she delivers it. It's the way she shows up. You know, the 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 mess, the way she presents, that is the content, right? That's what makes you ingest the content so well. So hopefully y'all paid attention because Christy is a master <laughs> at what she does. But thanks for your time, Thank Christy. You. I'm excited for your business. I hope it continues to take off as you're doing things on your own now. And uh, we're excited to dive in deeper and hopefully everyone will jump into your funnel and get all your stuff as well. Thanks so much, Graham. Thanks for having me. Well, hope you enjoyed that episode as much as I did. I learned a lot and I have literally gone through a lot of Christie's material myself and have applied much of it in real life situations and it works. Uh, She's brilliant and I love the way she packages up everything she's been doing as a number one speaker and author for years and puts it together for us to use. So if you want to dive deeper into her stuff, she did mention the speaking business starter kit. I highly suggest all of her content. Go to christywright.com slash starter kit. I'm going to link to it below here as well. And uh, just follow the breadcrumbs and see all the stuff she has to offer if this is an area you want to grow in. So I enjoyed this conversation selfishly for me, but I know a lot of you wanted to hear this as well and have been asking me about public speaking and getting better at communicating. So hopefully you enjoyed it as well. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks for sharing some of it with us. And we'll see you on another episode real soon.